I want to be friend zoned. I want to be in the friend zone. Please put me in the fucking friend zone. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of trying to, I'm sick of people trying to put me everywhere else but the friend zone. I'd rather keep it real with ya. Hey everybody, it's me, Mania, back with another video. I was going to give you part two of my link review, but then it was Asexuality Awareness Day, and I was like, mm, should probably do something for that. Um, not that I did anything in particular, but I do have like a funny story um, that relates to my asexuality that I'll tell you guys in a minute. But before I do that, I want to give you a few updates on me, on what's been going on with me, like I do every now and then. I give you like a little update video and I talk about like, you know, what's going on with me. Um, first thing I want to say, oh, actually, before I say anything, I've said this before in Discord, I don't know how many times I say it in videos, but every video I upload gets demonetized immediately, and by the time I'm able to get them to remove it, it's already several days past my upload date when everybody's already watched the video and then moved on to whatever they're doing. So if you guys want to support me, please consider you know, subscribing to me, giving the video a like, joining Discord. If you have a few dollars, you, know, you can do a one-time donation on Coffee. It really goes a long way. Like I said, anybody who donates on coffee, whatever amount of money you give me is way more than I could make in like a month on YouTube, especially now that all my videos are getting instantly demonetized. So I appreciate all the support from you guys. Um, I appreciate all the engagement and discord. I love talking to y'all, um, having our little debates, our discussions. And then also in Discord, we share funny videos, we share memes, we talk about how we're doing, people venting about their life struggles. So it's all really good. And I'm just glad to, you know, have a community that I can regularly engage with. So I appreciate all of it. Um, the other thing is you see my hair. <laughs> I've been getting flat twists for like, feels like ever now, like a year, two years, I don't know. Um, sh probably like shortly after I started this channel, once I cut my entire family off, I had to find a new stylist. And that stylist has exclusively done flat twist on my hair. Um, and so I have been struggling back and forth about whether or not I want to go all in and get locks or if I want to learn how to do my natural hair. Obviously, there's a lot of trauma and triggers around doing my hair. I also have some issues with coordination and like being able to mirror people. So I don't do well with video tutorials. Um, I was able to do a couple flat twists, which was nice, but then I immediately like freaked out <laughs> and broke down. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Um, but after I was, I took all my hair down, I put it in some puffs. Um, I might put the video picture up here. I might not, I wasn't really dressed for a picture, but I put in some puffs and I was going to go to the stylist, get my hair done the next day. And she was like, nah, I had some come up. I can't do it for another week and a half. And so my hair was already down. So I was like, you know, and so I just put in some puffs right now. It's in like, uh, two puffs going to the back. But as you can see, it's still very, you know, thick because I have very thick hair. And so what I'm exploring now, actually, what I'm going to be doing is trying to see if I can do like a little style with my hair, try to do some kind of Afro style. I've never worn my hair out. I've always had it twisted, braided, whatever, permed. Um, so now I'm trying to just like learn myself and see if I can do puffs, if I can do Afros and just appreciate my hair the way it is, the way it naturally is. So I'm going to be trying to do that as well. And I may share a picture in Discord or on Instagram of if I was able to make something look cute. If not, it will go back into puffs. But um, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm ex uh, exploring now. Those of you who follow me who are people of color, let me know what your experiences are, you know, dealing with your hair. I know there's a lot of cultural stuff going on with hair, but there's also a lot of trauma as well with hair. You know, I've had people tell me, don't get locks because you'll never get a job because they don't look professional. I've had people say locks are so low maintenance. You're going to love it because you don't have to do anything to it. Um, I've had people say, you know, locks can look totally professional. I don't know what these people are talking about. Or people say locks is permanent. Once you get locks, you can never have any other hairstyle for the rest of your life. And then other people being like, no, you can take it out if you want to, or you could cut your hair. Like, it's just, I'm getting everything from everywhere. So those of you who are people of color, particularly black people or people of color who just have very thick hair, tell me what y'all be going through. Um, 
do you maintain your natural hair? Do you only go to a stylist? It's not that I don't want to see stylists anymore. I'm just, I don't want to be overly reliant on stylists going into the future. I want to be able to, if I take a trip to somewhere like Japan, I don't want to be going into a salon being like, please do something with my hair because it's so thick and poofy. I don't know what to do. And then they try to like flat iron my hair and it just looks a mess. Like I don't want to be in that situation. When I went to Japan back in college, I literally wore like a, a weave. And after like a few weeks, the weave was looking real nasty. Like I had leave out and everything. The weave was looking real nasty. And I just, there was nothing I could do about it because nobody even knew what weave was out there. They thought I was wearing a wig. They were like, just take your wig off. I was like, that's not what I'm doing. So I don't want to be overly relying on a stylist to do my hair, especially if I want in the future, maybe live in a country where there aren't people with hair like this. Um, Oh my goodness, it's so interesting seeing it in the camera here. But um, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm going through on that end. The other thing that I want to talk about, I'm going to test putting my microphone down and see how that sounds before I go all in. Say, say, I'm trying to do something here. Man, 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 I'm trying to, I'm trying to do something here. Come on now, go on, get going, go on, get now. Okay, I love you too. Okay, so I've put the mic down. Sadie is on my lap because, of course, speaking of Sadie, one more story. I'm sorry, one more story. I went through hell trying to get Sadie to take a damn pill so I could take it to the vet to do her annual, which is really just getting her nails trimmed in one shot. That's how much I had to go through. I had to give her 300 milligrams of gabapentin the night before and two hours before the appointment. I take 300 milligrams of gabapentin. And I guess the understanding is because I've struggled so much in the past to give her pills, they was like, you may not even be able to give her the full 300, but if you can get any of it in her, it's going to help. Um, Sadie is so fucking smart that can't mash it into her wet food, can't... Uh, uh, twist it up in the liquid and then put it on her wet food. She won't eat it. She would literally stare at that wet food for four hours straight. She won't eat it. She'd rather go hungry. Um, tried mixing it up in whipped cream. She ate it at first and then she tasted it and she was like, nope. Try mixing it to butter. I know cats ain't even supposed to have butter, but I know that Sadie loves dairy that much. She licked at it one time and was like, nope. Um, they gave me a syringe. They said you could just mix it in a liquid and then squirt it in her mouth. When I tell you this girl... First of all, she wouldn't open her mouth. She wiggled like crazy. I wrapped her in a blanket, a towel, everything. It wouldn't work. Um, the little bit I was able to squirt in her mouth, she literally sat there and went <laughs> until she could spit it back up. I was so pissed. Um, I ended up just literally putting it in some stuff and like rubbing it on her face. And I'm like, well, at some point you're going to lick your face and then it's going to get in there. Um, I don't even know if it works that way, but People were like, get a pill gun and then you can stick it down. Th I was like, she won't open her mouth though. If she could open her mouth, I wouldn't need the pill gun because I would just squirt the syringe in there. So the next morning, and also the whole time, Morticia's like, oh, we're getting medicine. I want some. And she was like licking at the syringe. Like, yeah, you give me some of that. And I was like, no, it's not for you, Morticia. You don't have problems. <laughs> you don't have anger issues like your sister. You don't need medicine unless she needs like an antibiotic or something. But the morning before, I locked Sadie in the bathroom with me and Morticia was mad. She was like, I want some of whatever y'all doing in there. Cause Morticia could smell that I had gotten some more wet food out. And this time I got like this kind of, um, uh, bisque type stuff. It was like a seafood bisque. And I mixed the powder into the fish broth and put that in a syringe. And I was like, Sadie, we're not leaving this bathroom. I got up at six in the morning. We're not leaving this bathroom until I'm able to squirt this in your mouth. And she gave me all types of fighting and Morticia was on the other side of the door. Like, let me in, let me in. She gave me all types of fighting. And then finally I was able to get it into her mouth. I just squirted the whole time. I was like, Psh. I was like, fuck being safe. Psh. I got an opening. And she was going to try to throw it out. She was like, like, I saw she was trying to like make herself throw up. Like, going, mm -mm. and I grabbed her nose and I, I held her mouth closed and I blew in her nose. And she looked at me like, who told you to do that? 
how did you know to do that? <laughs> and I was just like, mm-hmm, yeah, I've been, I've been researching online. I've been talking to my cat friends. I blew in your nose and she swallowed it. And I was like, thank fucking God. And then when I got her into the vet, they were like, were you able to get any of it in her? And I was like, yes, I was. Thank God. Now I just have to clean my entire apartment because of all the messes she made spitting up here and there of me constantly. I went through six pills trying to give her two pills. And at the end of the day, I really think I only got one pill in her. Um, Spitting up on the carpet, the rugs, like I had to wipe the floors. I had to get out the, the carpet cleaner. I had to wash my towels, my blankets. Just, it was just a whole mess. I had to spray. Um, also, the, right after I was able to give Sadie the food, the, the syringe, I was like, so are you going to eat now? Because it's been like 18 hours since you've eaten. And she didn't want to eat. She didn't trust the food that I put down. She was like, Mm-mm, nope, you probably put something in it. So Morticia comes in and Morticia's like, ooh, food. And she already ate her breakfast. I didn't let Sadie eat breakfast because I was trying to give her the wet food. She already ate her breakfast. But because she saw food, she was like, yes. And then she went for it. And then she immediately threw up because she's Morticia. And Sadie was like, I would rather eat the vomit than eat the actual food that you gave me. I'd rather eat what she ate and then threw up. And I was like, you know what? Fine. At least you're eating something. You know, I was just like, it's just... And so I was like, after Sadie was done with that, I had to come in with bleach and just like start cleaning because I was like, this is disgusting. That's how I had to spend my morning. And I was gone for work for like several hours and they were like, did you, was everything okay with your cats? And I was like, it was a nightmare. And somebody was like, you're better than me. I would have sent Sadie back to the shelter. I was like, I'm not sending Sadie back to the shelter. Okay. I'm going to figure out how to deal with her one way or another. It's expensive you know, having to pay the vet, because this is, the problem with Sadie is, if there was two people in this house, she would, we could handle her, but I'm one person, so whenever I take it to the vet, it takes two, sometimes three people to clip her nails, and, you know, handle her, I'm one person, so it's hard, if there was another person who could hold her, and hold her mouth open while I squirt the syringe, then we would be Gucci, but I'm just one person, so this is what it is, anyway, off that story, I'm actually going to take these, uh, take these puffs down. Come on, puffs. Woo, look at that hair. Okay. Look at this, guys. Can you believe it? Look at how much hair I have. It only looks like this because I stretched it out and then put it in the puffs. But if I hadn't stretched it out, it'd be like an afro like this. Um, but yeah. So back on to some asexual talk, I'm going to talk about, well, maybe it's asexual, maybe it's aromantic, I don't fucking know, but I've been on the HelloTalk app relating to my language learning stuff. I've been on the HelloTalk app and I've been talking to mostly women, but I noticed even on the app where you're like talking to Japanese guys. One, don't get me wrong, a lot of Japanese guys, like, they're a lot more respectful than, like, American or Western guys. They're not super aggressive, but their big thing on those apps, instead of, like, having a conversation with you, they immediately want a phone call. And I'm like, you immediately wanting a phone call, it sound real fucking sus to me. Um, or they don't want to talk to you on the app, which has all kind of protections in it. They want to get to you on, like, line or something. And, oop, I just sprayed my face. I'm sorry, Sadie, I just sprayed you. Um, which is super fucking suspicious, right? And I've been actually talking to this one guy for like four or five months. I can't believe it's been like four or five months, honestly. Um, and this this thing is so funny with me that, that I never understood about about men. I don't know if it's a heterosexual man thing. I, d I really don't know like what it is. But when I first got on the app, um, one of the things that I was very conscious of because I'm a black woman is that Asian people have a bias towards black people. And I know that. And it's not something that's shocking to me. I'm not one of those like weebs who thinks that Japan is just amazing. And if I go there and I tell people I like anime, that they're going to like all like me and we're going to cosplay together and watch Spy Family together and shit. You know, I'm not like that. So 
when I first started, I had put my picture up. I was like, you know, this is my, you know, my little profile picture. And it was actually me because I was on there as me. And then I wasn't really getting anybody to talk to. I probably got one person who talked to me and barely had a conversation with me. There was very much like, you know, hello, I want to learn English. And then it kind of like filtered out from there. But nobody spoke to me. And so one of the things that I did was I changed my profile picture. So instead of it being a black woman, it was a black cat. After that, I get over 100, almost, I'm almost at 200 at this point of people viewing my profile. I had a lot of people messaging me when I would make posts, people were commenting and liking it. And all of a sudden I have all of these people who, this isn't a bad hairstyle either. I have all of these people who are like talking to me. And one of these, and one of the people who came to talk to me is the guy who I'm telling the story about. And we talked for a good long minute back and forth. You know, I was just like regular stuff talking about my experience learning Japanese when I went to Japan, how that went for me, where I went, where did I go? Um, why I want to learn Japanese. We started talking about Japanese culture, history, da, 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 da. And he was one of those Japanese people who he just really couldn't wait. I'm actually playing in my hair right now. I'm not doing anything in particular, but, um, which is something that I've never gotten to do. I've never gotten to play with my hair, but he couldn't wait to leave because, you know, everybody's the same. And he didn't like that. You know, the culture was, you, you weren't allowed to like be different and stuff like that. And he just really, really wanted to leave and he wanted to go to the U.S. because that just seemed like a much better place for him. And I was like, cool. And then one day, for absolutely no reason, he starts asking me for a call. Now, the first time he asked me for a call, I ignored him because I didn't want to have a call. I don't like having phone calls. You know, that's, that's just a thing that I do. And, but it came up, it started happening like more and more often where he would ask me like, you know, can we have a phone call? What are you doing? And this isn't, this dude also too, like most of the people I spoke to on the app were women and they were only active during certain times because they were in a completely different time zone where night was day. And so they could only talk to me for a short period of time. And did I just do my, did I just live my life like this? I don't know. But he was on all the time. He was up all night, all day talking on this app it never stopped and he started he kept wanting to have all these calls and I was like what do you want to have a call for and he was like oh I just want to have a call so I can teach you Japanese and I was just like I don't know I'm a little weird about that because I just I have a lot of anxiety about speaking as you guys know from my previous video I have a lot of anxiety about speaking in another language um, especially if it's one of those things where I can't see your face. I don't know how you're responding to what I'm saying. Um, and I just wasn't down with it. And he started telling me, there was one time he started telling me about a girl he was trying to talk to that was from Germany and he had met her in Japan and he was trying to like date her and stuff, but she was like, no, she didn't want to date him. And he did this thing that I've had I've had foreign men do to me a lot and it's kind of frustrating but it's like they start asking me for dating advice and his thing was like what do I do with her like what do I say and I was like what's the issue and he was like well I asked her out because she's so cute she's so beautiful blah 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 and she said no so what do I do now and I was like what you mean what you do now nigga leave her alone <laughs> I don't understand the question like where, and I've had guys do this to me where they're like, I just don't understand women and I need you to help me understand women. And I was like, understand what she told you that she didn't want to go out with you and she don't want to talk to you no more. So why are you acting like she's acting brand new or trying to do some new stuff to you? She just don't want to talk to you anymore. Um, and he was just like, well, what do I say to her? I was like, nothing. And he was like, so I just let her go back to Germany. Yes. Cause she said she didn't want to talk to you no more. She didn't want to be with you. And I was like, why are you, I was like, are you trying to get a girlfriend or are you trying to learn English? And he was like, it's the same to me. And I was like, no, that's not the same thing. 
trying to find someone to go out with and trying to find a language learning partner are different things. One is romantic. The other is learning. Now, sure, they can happen simultaneously. There's people who end up dating their language partner, but that's that shouldn't be your goal. And he could not understand what I was talking about. And sure enough, shortly after he decided to give up on messing with the Germ- German woman, he starts asking me, what type of man you like? And I was like, what? What type of Japanese man you like? What type of Asian man you like? And I was like, what you mean? He was like, I mean, like, what type of guy do you like? And I was just like, I don't know, nice guys, like, <laughs> kind of people. I don't even and it's weird because the conversation is like half English, half Japanese too. So like, I don't have a lot of complex things to say. I don't really like guys. So I don't, I don't mm, know how to answer that question. And he's like constantly asking me this. And I was just like, you know, I guess, you know, somebody who's nice, who's honest, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, you know, uh, well, I'm, I'm nice, right? Like, I feel like I'm an honest guy. And I was like, so what you saying? What, what you talking about? And he was just like, you know, I'm pretty cool. Right. And he sent me a mo. I'm like, eh, I guess you're fine. Like you're, you're, you're okay. There's nothing about you that is particularly amazing. You know, it's, we have our conversations and I could tell where he was kind of going. So I just started ignoring him for a minute. Like, or I would either not say anything or I would come back and I would say something completely unrelated. Like, damn, it was hot outside today. You know, it was uh, 85 degrees today, man. This is what it's like in the American South. It's just hot. Um, so I would just like completely change the subject because I don't care to go down this road with him. And he just, he, you know, he changed the subject and we moved on. I was like, okay, cool. Um, then he starts up again about like, I met this girl at a party and she's from Ukraine and I'm trying to talk to her and I'm trying to da 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 and I'm asking her out and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, don't know why you're telling me this. And sure enough, after that time when they're supposed to go on a date, I guess it didn't go well. He didn't, he didn't continue talking to me about it. He starts coming back to me. Like, I want to have a call. And I was like, I, I don't have time for a call. Okay. I'm working. He's like, you're always working. Why are you always working? I'm like, bitch, cause I'm an American. I'm always fucking working. All we do is work and sleep. That's why we so fat. <laughs> Very few few of us have time to like go to the gym and go on walks and shit. Like we be at work, working our asses off. And then when we're not working, we're sleeping because we need to rest from all the working we were doing. And he just couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah. And I, and I have, and with my job, like I never have any like vacation. Well, I've been trying to save up vacation so that I can um, take a week off literally. So I haven't like, I haven't taken an actual vacation in months because I'm trying to save up to take a week off. So I'm just like, yeah, no, I don't really have time off aside from like a couple at two, I get two sick days a year. Um, so I was just like, yeah, no, I'm always working. I'm always busy. I really don't want to have a call. And so he ends up dropping it for a while, but he brings it up every now and then. And I just ignore him. I just change the subject and I start talking about something else. And one day I was like trying to get, so I was able to get Japanese Hulu. Um, because if you use PayPal, if you use PayPal, you can get Japanese Hulu, PayPal and event in a VPN, you can get Japanese Hulu. And I had that for a while and it was pretty nice. I like watching, uh, some of the shows on there, but I really, really wanted Japanese Netflix. But in order to get Netflix in a certain country, you have to have a phone number in that country. And so I was trying and trying and trying. He actually had used Netflix uh, with a VPN a while ago to get it in Turkey so that it was cheaper. But now they have it to where you have to give a phone number in order to get access to that price range. So I couldn't I couldn't get a Turkey phone number, but he had a Japanese phone number. And so I was telling him about it and I didn't directly ask him, but then he offered. And I was like, yeah, if you could just tell me the code that it sends to your phone, you know. And he was like, "Okay, yeah, sure. And so he did that and I got access and I was like, yes. I was so happy about it. So then immediately after I do that, I'm like, oh, I'm about to watch all the Japanese stuff that I like. And he was just like, okay, so let's have a call. And I was like, what? And then I was like, um, I was thinking about it. I was considering it because I was like, well, you know, you just helped me out. And, um, but then I was like, what do you want to have a call about? What do you want to have a call about? And he was like, I want to talk about relationship." relationship with who 
And he was like, you and me. I was like, what? When did that happen? When did we, uh, when did we agree on that? I don't recall us having this conversation. And he was like, I was like, why do you want to talk about a relationship? I thought we was just, you know, trying to do Japanese language learning partners. And he was just like, nah, we beyond that. I was like, beyond that. Just because you gave me your number don't mean that, you know, we, we go together. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Um, and he was just not understanding. And I was just like, sir, I do not want to do this with you. Every And it was like a consistent pattern, I realized. I realized there was a consistent pattern with him. When there was a girl in front of him, he would tell me about it. And he would want to, like, you know, talk about how he can get with the girl. And whenever that girl rejected him or it didn't go well, he would turn around and look at me. And it was very annoying because I've had this pattern happen to me so many times in the past with my male friends, because I don't like the whole, you can't be friends with someone of the opposite sex unless they're gay. But even if they're gay, you might end up having sex with them one time when you're drunk or some shit like that. I don't like that. I don't like dealing with stuff like that. I want to have guy friends and I don't want it to be because they secretly want to date me or anything like that. Like, I like the friend zone. I want to be in the friend zone. Like, literally. Like, I'm okay with being in a friend zone. I want friends. I don't want anything else or anything more than that. Ooh, look at that. I don't want anything more than that. And it's always the same. It's like, I'm the, I'm the dude. I'm a dude. I'm a bro. I'm their friend. I'm your homie or whatever. And then as soon as you not getting what you need from the woman in your life, it turns into what kind of man you like, what you doing. And I made a joke um, to one of my friends about it. I was like, I was like, I swear dudes be like, they act like you don't exist until they get rejected by the girl they do want. And then they turn around and they look at you like in those rom-coms, like you just glowed up randomly when they weren't looking. And all of a sudden they're looking at you in a different light. And now they want you. That happened to me a lot. One of the things that gives me the most anxiety about talking to people that I went to high school with is that I was universally bullied, you know, elementary through high school, bullied by a lot of people, everybody, lowest person on the totem pole. Um, and it wasn't until high school that guys were like, hmm, I bet she'd be easy to sleep with since she has no friends and no one likes her. And I had to deal with that, right? And then when I went to prom and I was all cute and sexy, all of the dudes who was like treating me like their bro, they homie, or just another guy in the classroom, all of a sudden it's like, what you doing later? You got a hotel for the night? Like they trying to talk to me and like, like fill up on me and stuff. And I was like, nigga, what you doing? Like, I thought we was, I thought we was homies. Why are you trying to like touch my body and stuff? Why are you whispering in my ear? I don't like that shit. Get your hot breath away from me. And literally it was like, they just would switch up on me. And it was so frustrating. I didn't like it. I had a lot of guy friends who in the heat of a moment when we're partying, it would be like, I'm just going to grab your breast. No, no, that's not okay. That's not appropriate. Did I tell you you could do that? Why didn't you ask me? You know, or they'll try to kiss you and stuff. And I understand that in the movies, it's like romantic to just randomly kiss people. But I'm not that person. I don't like to be randomly touched or randomly kissed. And so I, I've had this happen to me so many times where it's like, I'm the homie. And then all of a sudden I'm like, what ugly Betty to, then turns into the girl next door or something like I didn't get I don't get dressed up for y'all to turn around and look at me and be like oh she's actually cute maybe I can get some with like I don't get dressed up for that I don't do that I don't plan on doing stuff like that or being involved with stuff like that and it just frustrates me so much because it's such a disappointment you know if I wanted to be with you romantically if I wanted to go on a date with you I would say that from the jump but these, but people, they just like, they like to have ulterior motives. And I literally ended up popping off on him, the Japanese guy. I literally ended up popping off on the Japanese guy because I told him that I wanted a language partner. I did not want a boyfriend. I'm not here to flirt with you. I'm here to practice my, my language learning skills. Now we can be friends, but we cannot be more than that. And I'm sick of you trying to make this more than that. And he was not understanding it. And I was just trying, and like, he literally acted like he didn't understand the difference between finding a language partner and finding a girlfriend. He didn't understand the difference. And I was like, nigga, it's a big difference. And that's, and then it, it hit me. It was like, this is why there's been so many guys who've messaged me on this app 
who they say, hey, they give me like a wave emoji. And then immediately it's like, I want to have a call with you. I want to have a call. Can I call you? I want to call you. And I'm like, you just said, all you said to me was, hey, there's a reason that these girls on these apps have things saying that I'm not looking for somebody to date. I'm not looking for a boyfriend because this is what dudes are doing on these apps. And it pisses me the fuck off. You can't do anything anywhere. Like even on LinkedIn, men will be out here trying to find women. They will be in people's DMs trying to date them. I'm sick of it. Like I'm so sick of allosexual men doing this shit. It's not cool. It's not fun to be out minding your own business online in a non-dating place, a non-even social media e place. And you got to deal with niggas trying to talk to you. I don't like that. Stop. And it just really pissed me the fuck off. I couldn't, I was just, I was just so upset. And so I ended up popping off on him because I was like, it makes me not want to talk to you because it seems like you have an ulterior motive. And he was like, I don't understand the difference. Like, it's the same, you know, get a girlfriend, learn English. It's the same. And I'm like, it's not the same. And it makes me not want to talk to you because I don't trust you to have a call with me. If all you're going to do is like flirt with me and all that stuff. I'm not, there's nothing I've said to you that has indicated that I even wanted to learn how to flirt in Japanese. Like that's nothing of what I've been doing. Now I know that there are some weaves out there who want to date Asian people and don't get me wrong. When I was younger and I was a weeb myself, if a Japanese dude, uh, spoke to me on Facebook or some shit, I would have been super excited. Like all you need is an anime avatar and I would have added you on Facebook. I would have been super excited, but I'm grown now and they're grown and I don't want to do that. I don't want to be, well, do I want to be in a romantic relationship? I don't fucking know. But in this particular case, I don't want to be in a romantic relationship with this person. Also, you don't know what I look like. You don't know my real name. You don't know where I live because the only places you know in America are New York and California and Texas. What makes you think that I would want to date you? Also, the fact that you are so eager to constantly try and flirt with me and try to date me and all this stuff tells me you're doing it with all the other girls you talk to on this app as well because you've been on this app for like half a year now or a whole year now. I don't know how long it's been for real. So what you're telling me is even if I did agree to date you, even if I did say, okay, yes, I will date you and we we be boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. How I know you not saying all the same shit to every other girl in this app? And he was acting like he didn't understand what I was talking about. I was like, oh, all of a sudden, you don't understand words coming out of my mouth. Uh, Hello Talk has a translation feature. So anything I say to him in English, he can click a button and it gets translated to him in Japanese. So he can't pretend he don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay. So I got really upset at him. And he was like, I don't understand. I don't understand. I was like, that's cool. You don't have to understand. I'm not going to talk to you for a minute. <laughs> like... And I was telling, I don't know, I had mentioned something about this t- um, on social media and like one of my cousin's friends or whatever was like, men can't help who they attracted to. And I was like, I don't give a fuck who you attracted to. You can be attracted to me all you want to. That doesn't mean you need to constantly be pushing me to like talk to you and like date you and stuff like that. That's not okay. I don't like that. And so I was just like, just because he's attracted to me, first of all, it don't even matter because it'd be one thing if you were attracted to me and you were only trying to talk to me and nobody else, but you're talking to fucking everybody. He's attracted to fucking everybody. So why does it matter to me that you like me? Like I'm supposed to feel special or something like that's supposed to make me feel like, Ooh, I'm chosen. I'm picked because a guy likes me. No, I'm not that type of person. And I always, it always frustrated me growing up because I now looking back, I see that a lot of guys thought that I was the type of person because I wasn't conventionally attractive because I was bigger, because, you know, I was socially awkward. Um, I was into weird stuff, you know, the rocks, the rock music, the horror stuff, you know, because of all of that, they thought that I would be easy, that I would be grateful that a guy even liked me. And I've had this happen. And I had, I remember in high school, there was this guy who liked me and he was my friend. So it was a little annoying that he liked me like that because literally I watched this dude cheat on all of his girlfriends. So for him to be like, oh, I'm interested in you, Minu, I was just like, "Eh, no, thank you. And when he told people I rejected him, everybody couldn't believe it. They was like, you? 
rejected him? And I was like, yeah. And they was just like completely surprised and shocked. Like they couldn't believe their ears that I had rejected him because he was popular. He was conventionally attractive. And I wasn't jumping at the opportunity to date somebody like that. And I was just like, why would I date you when I've watched you cheat on all your girlfriends? And that happened multiple times in high school with multiple different guys. I'm pulling up here. That happened multiple times in high school with multiple different guys. And it never ceased to annoy me that people couldn't believe that I was allowed to reject someone. I know I'm not the best at this, guys. But again, it's like, I'm just learning my hair. At the tender age of 26, almost 27, finally able to learn my hair and manipulate my hair and do things with my hair. It's a little embarrassing, but honestly, what can I do? So after all of this arguing and stuff and I ghost him for a while, he comes back around and all of a sudden starts calling me dude, starts calling me bro, starts calling me man friend and all of this stuff. And I'm like... Oh, okay. So we're back to homie stage. Got it. Um, and I was just like, I was just like, why are you calling me dude and bro and all this stuff? It's weird. And he was like, because you're my friend, you're my dude, dude, you're my bro. Da, 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 da. And I was just like, okay. It sounds weird too, coming from a Japanese guy, but it's just like, okay, whatever. We're back to dude and bro. Um, and I even told the cousin's friend who was like, men can't help with I was like, yeah, I done rejected him enough that now he's calling me like dude and bro and stuff. And he was like, oh, wow, you got friends on ha ha. And I was like, yeah, that's that's kind of what I wanted to happen. I want to be friend zoned. I want to be in the friend zone. Please put me in the fucking friend zone. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of trying to I'm sick of people trying to put me everywhere else but the friend zone. And. um, Like, I'm like, it's not an insult to me to be put in the friend zone. That's the place that I want to be. That is a place where I will be happy. <laughs> and sorry, Morticia. She sleep behind me. Um, and I was just like, okay, whatever. And I'm just like, I, I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of it. I want to have friends. I want to have guy friends. And it never makes any sense to me either because lesbians and gay people exist. But it's this compulsory heterosexuality thing. And so he finally's like, you know, want to talk to you outside of the app. I want to talk to you outside of the app. What's your Instagram? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, here we go again. I just, a few seconds ago, I was bro and dude. Now it's what's your Instagram so I can look at pictures of you and DM you and all that shit. And I was like, I don't have an Instagram. Sorry. I never use that app. Um, He's not going to use the phone number because people in Japan only use line. So I said, okay, I create, I had a line. Um, and, I, but I created another line and I was like, okay, I got line. And so then he starts messaging me online and sure enough, he switches it up again. Um, talking about, I want to come see you. I'm going to get a, a visa to come see you. Where are you? Where do you live? So I can come see you. Let's meet up. And da, 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 da. And I was like, why are you doing this? I knew you was going to do this. That's why I can't trust you. You always switching the shit up. And I went off of him again. <laughs> One thing about me, I don't take my foot off these niggas' necks, okay? I went off of him again. And he was like, no, 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 we're friends. No, why would I try to date you? No, we're friends. You're my bro, dude. Da, 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 da. You know, it's just we've been talking for so long. It's just, you know, I want to see my friend. And I want to help you learn that language. I want you to be fluent in Japanese and da, 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 da. And I'm just at a point where it's like, I really can't trust anything that you say. Because literally every single time you tried to have a call with me, it was on some romantic shit. He was like, what? No, no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm sorry. You know, Japanese men, we're just like this. I was like, what do you mean just like this? No, y'all are a lot nicer, okay? First of all, even though he's getting on my nerves, he's very nice. Um, And nice don't mean kind. I was like, no, if this, was, if you were a Western guy, you would have cursed me out 50 times by now <laughs> and sent me photos of yourself. It just would have been weird. Um, And I, I do know what the guy looks like. But, um, no, it, it wouldn't have went this way if you were a Western man. And he couldn't even believe that Western men were as rude as I was talking about. I was like, yeah, no, 
it's not like you're just like some horrible, awful person or Japanese men are terrorizing me. I'm fine. I'm, I'm grown. I'm not getting like PTSD flashbacks of you got, I'm just saying like for you specifically, you have a specific pattern of behavior. God damn. You have a specific pattern of behavior that makes it, that makes it hard for me to trust you. And it makes me even more uncomfortable getting on a call with you because I don't know what you're going to say to me. And if I was actually, if we were actually going to be practicing the language, I want to prepare the stuff that I want to talk about because if not, I'll just freeze up and go mute again. So he's like, finally, it seemed like it got through to him. Um, how he was coming across as creepy. And it's the same guys that come to me asking, telling me they don't understand women and asking what to do when a woman re rejects them, thinking that they still have an opportunity to do something to say something to her. It'd be them same dudes who don't understand how their own behavior is creepy. So I had to let them know. I was like, hey, if we're really friends. I'm going to tell you that your, your behavior is creepy. And he finally seemed to got, get it and he apologized. But he still was talking about how he wanted to come to America. I was like, you want to come to America? That's cool. We not meeting up whenever you come to America. That's not going to happen like that. I don't meet up with men. And like all of, I have friends who I've known online for a good amount of time and I do plan to meet up with them, but I give it like a year, year and a half before I actually like commit. And we have to be con talking continuously. It can't be, we spoke for like two months and then we didn't speak for eight months. And then now I'm showing up at your place now. Um, I even told him like that I was planning to move this year instead of going to Japan. And he was like, oh, damn, this is tough. This detangling shit. And he was like, oh, where are you moving to? And I was like, don't worry about it. It won't make any sense to you, wherever it is. And he was like, yes, it will. You can tell me. Are you going to New York? And I'm like, no, nigga. I was like, you won't know any place that I'm going to. Trust me. You, you, you won't know. And he was like, you can tell me. I No, I don't want to tell you. It's not if I can't tell you. I can do whatever I want. I can say whatever I want. I just don't want to. Um, That's kind of where we are now. We're still kind of talking. He's like, you know, what you up to? Do you want to have a call at midnight? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, I know some of you are probably thinking too, like, why are you still talking to He's literally the only person who's consistent enough on the app that I can get my Japanese practice in. So, you know, we can talk, but I'm being very clear about my boundaries. And whenever I speak to a new person on the app, like, and it's a guy and he's a media expert call, I'm like, I don't do calls. And then they ghost me. And I'm like, yeah, I figured that's why you were here. Um, but he's really just the most consistent person. There are some people who I talk to who I never really hear from, like probably hear from them every few weeks or so. And it's just not good at for getting your language learning in. But I just wanted to rant about that because I'm just... I don't know how it is in the gay community, the lesbian community, because I don't, you know, I'm not part of that. Um, but it's just something that I just, I get so frustrated with about our culture where it's like you can't, like you cannot interact with people of the opposite sex. If you're a woman or a film presenting person, you cannot interact with people of the opposite sex. Um, online because even in a culture where they are trained to be as nice as possible as pleasant as possible and not to be rude or disrespectful they still out here trying you they still trying you and I just can't deal and I just think that like I just wish because I do want to have guy friends I just wish I could have guy friends who we they treated me like they would treat any other dude that they was hanging out with that's how, that's what I want. I want a guy who's going to treat me the same way that he would treat any dude that he was hanging out with. We play video games. We might hang out, talk about what you got going on in your life, what you're doing, what you're up to. We might go get drinks. Like, why can't I do that? Like, I don't even trust uh, asexual men in asexual groups because I've known some of them, either they are asexual or not, I don't really know, but I've known some of them to actually meet up with ace women in person and still be weird and creepy and push boundaries and want to be touchy and all of this weird shit and want to stalk you. Like just because a man is ace doesn't mean that he still, that doesn't mean that he hasn't conformed to 
like the society that teaches him that he's entitled to your presence and your energy, you know, and he could be ace and heteromantic and still pull out all the same tricks that cis had dudes do. And it's just upsetting that you can't even trust a guy. Like if he says he's asexual, you can't even trust that that means he's not going to try something with you, whether it's sex, whether it's kissing you, whether it's touching you inappropriately, whether it's moving the relationship along too fast and want you to meet his family and get married. Like you can't trust that none of that is real. And that's frustrating as hell. But that's just something that I wanted to rant about that's been happening Um, I feel like it's in the vein of asexuality, just another struggle that asexual women, asexual femme people, femme presenting. I don't keep up with all the terminology, okay? Somebody told me saying AFAB and AMAB was wrong. I don't know what everything's supposed to be saying, okay? Um, when I was in college and I was studying gender and all of that stuff, it was men, women, NBs, trans people, And looking at their experiences, I don't keep up to date with all of the new terminology that's trying to be as inclusive as possible, because honestly, everybody's experiences is different. So even though I'm speaking generally, there might be women out there who have an easy time getting um, having friendships with men. I just don't know them. Okay, so look, I'm speaking from my personal experience. If my terminology is off, okay, let's. Yeah, it's, it's exhausting. It's exhausting trying to detangle 4C hair. I'm still on the same, I'm still on one side of my head. I have not touched the other side of my head. This is ridiculous. And we've been, we've been at this video for how long? But yeah, it's a, it's exhausting trying to keep up with all the terminology when trying to talk about your experiences or make generalizations. Um, But as always, I'm open to hearing other people's experiences. So If you find that as a trans woman, you have an easier time having, having friends, having male friends, you know, let me know. If you find that as an envy, you have an easier time having friends, let me know. I'd love to hear you guys' experiences. Like, I'm just speaking generally from my experience and then the experience of people that I know or people that I've seen online who all you have to do is exist online as a woman. and you can't get no breaks. And so, in two ways. That's all I want to talk about today. Happy Asexuality. Um, what is it? Inter- International Asexuality Awareness Day. I didn't really participate in any of the online events, but I did share them in Discord. So, like I said, if you guys want to go in Discord, you want to discuss experiences that you've had that you don't really want to be public on the YouTube comments, I love to hear about your experiences it's all it's hearing about everybody's experiences is what helps me grow as a person because I have my own experiences that inform my view of the world. So it's really good to hear other people's experiences so that that view of the world can broaden. So I really appreciate talking with you guys. This is untouched side. And then this is the touch side. Look how long it is now that you I've stretched it out. Um, But I really appreciate talking with you guys. I appreciate all your support. Like I always say, you know, like and subscribe. Um, Support me on Coffee if you like the content I make. If you have ideas for videos you want me to make or if you want me to talk about some other things in the asexual community, maybe something I might need to research a little bit. um, I would love to hear your suggestions and I'll totally make a video about it. You know, if somebody like messages me on Discord and is like, Hey, I really want to get your opinion on this. Can you make a video on it? Sure, let's do it. You know, um, I like to. It was very, very complicated to record and upload before, but I would like to do another Discord discussions video. I don't have any idea exactly what it'd be about because we kind of go off the rails when we're talking, and I have no problem going way off topic. <laughs> um, but I want to do more of that with you guys because I do love talking to you guys and hearing your experiences. Hope you guys are enjoying your Sunday. I hope you are eating food. I hope you are drinking your water. Um, And if you're only drinking water, apparently we also need to keep up with electrolytes now too. Um, Eating your food, drinking your water, taking naps, taking care of yourself because you deserve it and no one's going to do it for you. I'm going to see you guys uh, in next week's video to um, conclude my my little two-parter on Link. Uh, Thank you for those who did 
uh, comment on that video. I know it's not a very popular video. It's not something that people really follow me from, but it just happened to be something that I wanted to talk about. And I hope that, you know, if people are searching around and they want to hear somebody's opinion on it, that they'll find my video and it'll be helpful for them. Um, so part two will be out next week to conclude that. And then, you know, we'll just go from there. We'll see what pops up. Um, but yeah, like I always say, uh, I really enjoy talking to you guys. Thank you so much for all of your support. Um, enjoy the rest of your, enjoy the rest of your week. Bye.